Hello and welcome to the Missouri River Regional Library Information Show. I'm Renee Strumpf and I'm with the Missouri River Regional Library and I'm here today with two of our librarians from our Jefferson City Library and they are Kira, our reference coordinator, and Courtney, our team librarian. And we're going to discuss a few of our programs that we have going on in our library today. And we're going to start with our knitting program. So can you all tell us a little bit about that? Well, we meet once a month and get together to share projects that we're working on, show off projects that we've finished, and just chat about what we're doing. When, if people have questions, Courtney and I are there, and we have a wealth of expertise in our group, so if Courtney and I can't answer it, we have a lot of good folks in our group. And lately, we've also been highlighting upcoming fiber and knitting workshops. Is this group for just experienced knitters? No, this group actually is for all levels of knitters, including beginners. Um, it's also open to anybody else who's interested in any variety of fiber arts, including crochet and latch hooking. We have a couple of spinners in the class who bring their own spinning wheels and spin their own yarn, which is really fun to watch. Um, and everybody likes to share their tips and techniques. So does everyone pretty much bring their own project to work on, or do you have any group projects that you do, or how does that work? Well, most of the beginners work just kind of on basic swatches so that we can get them going into uh, other projects. Uh, we've been working collaboratively on an afghan that we are going to donate to charity when it's done. Uh, one of our coworkers, um, uh, Karen Gelber, has been crocheting the edges. So this is the crochet, or this is our afghan. It's knitted and crocheted, but it's been uh, worked on by pretty much everybody in the group. Uh, and we, of course, invite new members to come in and bring a swatch as well, and we're always happy to add it. So the more the merrier. So if you have inexperienced people, do you teach them how to knit or crochet, or do you already have to know how to do it in order to? Come? Well, if you have never knit or crocheted before, and you have patience and persistence, Courtney and I will be glad to show you the basics. You will need to practice on your own. We'll work with you for some time and then come back around and later on check and see how you're doing. If you're a beginner knitting, if you've never knit before, um, we've got plenty of yarn, but you'll need to bring your own needles. I recommend that beginners use size seven diameter, um, not too big, and, but not too small. And for the length of the needle, real long ones like people used in the olden days get kind of unwieldy and make it hard to learn. So I recommend nothing longer than eight inches. If you want to learn how to crochet and have never done that before, Courtney and I know the basics, but that's not our expertise. We can show you the basics and then some of the other members can show you some of the more advanced stitches. If you've crocheted before, a lot of people find that they pick up knitting really quickly, really easily. Um, and then we've had a number of people who have said they haven't knit in 20 years and have forgotten all how to do it, but they pick it up really quickly. Well, when and where does this happen? Uh, we meet the first Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. and we meet for a couple hours at each session. Uh, we meet in the story hour room, which is up on the second floor of the library, um, and it's a nice little cozy room up there. Is everyone welcome to come to this program? We welcome teens and adults. The program is actually designed for ages 12 and up. So we welcome pretty much anybody in that age group. And we have had um, several generations of family members come, which is always really fun. So speaking of teens, Courtney, you are the teen librarian. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the teen programs that you have going on at the library? I would love to. Uh, our teen department is really, really active, and a lot of people don't always realize that we have uh, a lot of events that are specifically for teens. I have four regular monthly events, including two book groups, one that is for grades nine through 12, and another that is for grades six through eight. So there's a middle school group and a high school group. Our middle school group is called Novel Ideas, and our high school group is called Pizza and Pages. 
And yes, both groups uh, get free copies of the book when they join. And they also uh, get snacks and refreshments. Pizza and Pages gets pizza, of course. Um, and my other two monthly events are our anime club. Um, so for those who are fans of Japanese animation, um, we offer uh, a monthly club on the third Thursday of every month. And we watch all kinds of stuff. And we have free popcorn and soda. And that's a really, really active group. And finally, our most popular monthly group is our Saturday night after hours, um, where we open the second floor of the library up for gaming, and we order pizza and soda, and we just have a lot of fun. Um, I do also do some other fun programs that I throw in here and there. Uh, coming up this week, I don't know if this will actually air in time, but coming up this week I have a duct tape craft where we're going to make school supplies. In September we have a group game session, which is right after school. We're going to play games that are you can really only do in a big group, so we'll kind of get crazy. Um, and it'll be a lot of fun. We haven't done that in a couple years. Uh, we're going to have a spy program. We're going to teach people spy techniques. Um, and then, of course, in October, we're going to have our ever our teen night will actually be a Heroes versus Villains Halloween party. So we're really excited about that. And then, of course, every day, the teen zone is open from 2 o'clock until close. Uh, until the library closes. The teen zone's up on the second floor of the library, and not only is that where you will find all of our fiction and our graphic novels, including our manga, you will also find in the teen zone our computers, which are reserved just for teens, um, and we have a number of gaming consoles, including uh, PS3, uh, Wii, a a PS2, um, an Xbox 360, um, and we have a really, really, really nice setup with a 55-inch flat screen TV, and we have the Kinect for Xbox, and we can even put the TV in 3D if you really want to, so that's always fun. And we're obviously open right after school, so we have a lot of people who come to the library while they're waiting, maybe for their parents to pick them up or just to see people after school. Yeah, so I would imagine that that stays pretty busy, especially with the new school year starting up. It absolutely yeah. does, and we see a lot of our a lot of people that we haven't seen since summer uh, began. So it's it's really exciting to see everybody coming back this year, and we're seeing a lot of new faces too. Can you tell us kind of what a typical day is like in the teen zone, oh or boy. typical afternoon? <laughs> typical afternoon, it'll usually be quiet until a little bit after three when school lets out and then you'll have one or two teens and then suddenly the room will be full of teens who are all laughing and playing games um, and taking turns on the various gaming consoles. Um, they usually play multiplayer games so that as many people can play and swap out as possible. I've seen a lot of friendships develop um, because we are able to get teens from a wide variety of schools and backgrounds together in the same place. Do we have time for um, some information about yoga? Sure. I wanted to talk about our weekly yoga program. Once a week, Thursday mornings at 9 o'clock, upstairs in the art gallery, we have a live yoga instructor. We've got Alberta Mobley, who does it every other week, and then John Ferguson instructs the other weeks. There's no charge. All sizes, shapes, and expertise levels are welcome. Um, if you have a mat, bring it. If not, bring a towel. Sometimes we have a few extra mats that people can use. So every week, 9 o'clock, get yourself ready for the day with yoga. Awesome. Well, I feel I should also add that all teen programs are always free. We never charge for programs at the library. So it sounds like there are a lot of great options coming up to the library for people to come if they want to stop by. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to wrap up this portion of our show. I want to thank Courtney and Kira for joining us, and we will be back after this short break. Hi, 
I'm Donna Scheidt with the Jefferson City Daycare Center. The Jefferson City Daycare Center is a licensed daycare with an accredited early childhood education program. We care for up to 99 children ages birth to eight, primarily from low and middle income families. Our philosophy is that each child is entitled to safe, clean, and attractive surroundings in an educational program which will foster a deep sense of his or her self-worth. Our job is to provide a quality infant, toddler, and preschool program that will prepare your child for a successful entry into kindergarten. The Jefferson City Daycare Center, providing quality early childhood education services in a caring environment. We're proud to be a United Way partner agency. Find us online at www.jcdcc.org and like us on Facebook. Welcome back to the Missouri River Regional Library Info Show. I'm Renee and I'm back with Kira, our reference coordinator, and Madeline, one of our adult programming librarians, has also joined us today. We're going to continue to talk about some of the programs and services that the library offers, and we're going to begin with Madeline. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the upcoming programs at the library? Well, we've got some great fall programs coming, September and October. Uh, just so many of them. I'm going to start just going down the list. <laughs> Uh, on September 3rd, we have Shakespeare on Demand, and it is uh, a husband and wife um, acting troupe, and they're from Massachusetts, and they're traveling across the country, visiting schools, doing workshops, and um, what they do, from what I understand, is um, you can, they'll be, uh, you know, on stage, and you can yell out, do the scene from Romeo and Ju Juliet, blah, 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 or do the scene from Hamlet, and they just do it on the spot. And it sounds pretty exciting. Um, they, they have been together, oh, since um, probably for 20-some years, and the man is named Ty uh, Lemero, and he was also in the Naval Reserves and did Hamlet in Afghanistan. So, I mean, yeah. you know, what you wouldn't expect that this would yeah. maybe be something that was, uh, you know, really popular, but it was. And so, anyway, um, that, that one is something we're really looking forward to. Um, we have a First Friday film series, and that film, we, we alternate a documentary film and a feature film. And the one on the September film is Catch Me If You Can, the feature film with Matt Damon. It's kind of a fun, light, lighthearted film. Uh, on September 10th, we have an author visit, and it's uh, John Drake Robinson. I don't know, I'll show the book. Um, he is the former Missouri Department of Tourism uh, director. Since, the, uh, since retiring, he has been traveling around. He does freelance writing. And he has traveled throughout Missouri, and the book that he's written, A Road Trip into America's Hidden Heart, is just kind of a memoir. It's just traveling the back roads, backwoods, and backyards of Missouri. And uh, I'm kind of excited about that one, too. Uh, on September 11th, uh, we have Nonfiction at Night. It's a book discussion program, and it focuses on current events. Um, political things, social issues, but uh, this month we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, the book is Wild, and it's been a, a major bestseller, and it is by Cheryl Strayed, and it's a story of her trek from uh, on the Pacific Crest Trail, something like a 2,000, I think it's something like a 2,000 mile walk. She had never camped before. She did it alone, and, you know, traveled throughout this, uh, you know, this long trip. So. Uh, it's something I haven't read it yet. I'm, I'm going to start reading it, and I'm excited about that one too. Um, on September 12th, this is a major program with Jennifer Farr Davis, and she's an author. She's an author of um, I think five or six books, and she is the 2012 National Geographic Adventure of the Year. Uh, she has. She's going to show slides from over 12,000 miles of her long-distance hiking. Uh, she's hiked the Appalachian Trail, and she's been, she's been a hiker all over the world. So this is, you know, kind of an amazing, amazing woman. <laughs> so she's going to be here. Um, on September 20, oh, September 17th, we have two men, Bob Colvin and Walt Mose, and they're fairly well-known in town. Uh, they're photographers. 
and they've been with the Jefferson City Photo Club for many years, and I think they're pretty well known. They're doing a, a photo show of a trip that they took to uh, the Rocky Mountain area, and it's called What He Saw and What I Saw, two different ways to look at you know, the same thing. Um, on September 24th, uh, we're doing a resume basics class, and you can bring uh, your resume to the class and have it evaluated for, you know, just uh, advice. It's uh, Jeannie Wortham, and she is an expert in this area. Uh, we've had her before, and it's been a very popular class. Um, on September 26th, I feel like I'm just listening and listening and listening, uh, home security tips, and it's with the local police officer, Kevin Kempker. Uh, and that's, those are September programs, so that's a pretty full slate. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to do October? Yeah, do you have a lot of, you can go ahead and give us your October <laughs> programs, too. Okay. All right. Um, October 3rd is Medicare 101 with Gail Carlson, and she's from Primaris. It's a group that works with insurance agencies, and since so many Baby boomers are hitting the age when they're going to want to find out about Medicare. I thought this would be uh, an interesting program. The first Friday film uh, in October is Hitler's Children, a more serious uh, documentary film. And it is actually about the children of you know, people like Rudolf Hess and Goering and you know, some of Hitler's hench people and what their lives have been like since the war. Uh, on October 10th, there's a program uh, with Rudy Keller from the Columbia Daily Tribune, and he has written a lot of Civil War books. And uh, his program is called A Question of Legitimacy, How Control of Jefferson City Kept Missouri in the Union. So Civil War programs are always popular, and looking forward to that one too. Um, October 17th, um, Adam Viley, who's a local author, has self-published a book, and since there's a lot of interest in self-publishing these days, he's going to talk about some of the problems that he's encountered and have tips for you know, new authors and how they can publish their own books. And one more, uh, uh, October 28th, uh, Temples of Democracy, Carnegie Libraries in Missouri. And there are a lot of Carnegie Libraries in Missouri. I'm going to guess maybe 40 or so at least. And the presenter is Jeff Smith, or Jeffrey Smith, and he has been on the Chautauqua circuit, and he is Andrew Carnegie. I mean, he just kind of becomes Andrew Carnegie, and it's really, it's great to watch him. So, wow. Anyway. Sounds like there are a lot of great programs coming yeah. up. Yeah. And they're always free at the library, They're always correct? free. They're always in the art gallery, at least so far, and they're at 7 o'clock. All right. Well, thank you, Madeline. Mm -hmm. You're We're going to switch gears over to Kira, and you are the library's reference coordinator. And so can you tell us a little bit about what that means, since a lot of people may not be familiar with that, and what are some resources that the library has to offer? Okay, as reference coordinator, I'm in charge of um, the desk that answers your questions. And I'd like to highlight some of the research resources that you might not be aware of. We have several databases, and for those of you unfamiliar with the, the way we use the word databases, database is a online collection of usually it's magazines, journal articles, newspaper articles, and we have several of those. Um, master file is one that we have, and it's got hundreds of journals, including consumer reports, all the way to journal of personality and social psychology research. So if you're writing a paper, We've got several databases that are good for finding information on articles and um, that sort of thing. We have a, another type of database that's very popular with genealogists. So if you're researching your ancestors, we've got two genealogy databases and they contain information from census records, U.S. census records, U.K. census records. They have um, immigration lists, ship passenger lists, and as well as articles from genealogy magazines. A, another database we have that's very helpful for both students and for people wanting to improve their careers is called Learning Express. It has 
exams, practice exams online that you can study for and practice taking the test. And this, for educational purposes, we have the GED, we've got ACT for high school or college entrance, GRE, LSAT, which is for law school. There's a whole bunch of. If I may interject, I just had someone this morning who wanted the ASVAB test. So yes, the ASVAB the military, for military. So I mean, it's a hugely and citizenship popular. test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got that. We also have automotive repair manuals online. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're needing a wiring diagram or a schematic, just need to know where that bolt goes that you that you took out from your car. Um, come ask us and we'll be happy to show you Mitchell's Automotive. And last but not least, we have a language learning database that helps you learn a variety of different languages. Um, you have both the written online as well as the audio portion and you can practice and it'll give you feedback on your pronunciation and it has languages from Spanish, both Latin American Spanish as well as European Spanish, Russian, German, Chinese, even Tagalog. So um, come into the library and we'll be happy to show you this wealth of information. Okay. Well, that is about all the time we have today. Thank you for joining us and thank you, Kira and Madeline, for coming today as well. And we will see you next time.